How does one even begin to sum up what 2017 was like as a year? And through it all, we still had beauty products. I'm super excited today to sit down and bring you my best in beauty from 2017. These are always really fun videos to do. Um, they do require quite a bit of preparation. And I'll just briefly tell you my philosophy for a best in beauty video because everyone does them a little bit differently and I have done them a little differently from year to year in the past. Some people like to do a favorite product in every category for like makeup or skincare, like favorite cleanser, favorite mask, favorite eye cream, da 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 da. My philosophy is to share my favorite beauty discoveries of the year. So these are products that I discovered during 2017 across skincare, makeup, body. I have like a hair, nails, miscellaneous category and then lifestyle, which includes for me, media, experiences and music. A lot of my like tried and true favorites that I've discovered in years past won't be in this video. This is strictly things I discovered in 2017. If I discovered something early in 2017, like January or potentially even like the very last couple months of 2016, it might be in here. There's a couple products where that, that line is a little blurry. <laughs> I don't fully remember for some of these things, but for the most part, these are things I discovered this year. So I will try and include timestamps down below for the different categories, skincare, makeup, etc. I will try and have everything linked as well. That's going to be a mammoth undertaking, but I will need something to do on all of the plane rides and airports that I'm going to be sitting in. <laughs> leading up, which will have already happened obviously by the time you see this. So I think 2017 was a great year for beauty products and why don't we just dive in because this video is probably going to be like an hour long. So we'll start with what is a lot of people's favorite category and that is skincare. So in no real particular order, two products from Moon made my list this year. Moon Aqui, which is their cleanser, and Moon Anna Rose, their toner. Uh, Aqui is one of those products that I may have discovered very late in 2016. I can't remember when this was the Beauty Heroes Hero product, but it was either very late 2016 or very early 2017, and it's become a beloved cleanser of mine. I just absolutely adore it. I discovered Anna Rose a little bit later in the year, I think over the summer. These have both been just such exceptional, exceptional products in my skincare routine. They're extremely gentle, refined, elegant, elevated, great for sensitive skin types, and I can't imagine anyone not falling in love with these products. I should have said before we got started, I'm not gonna have time obviously to belabor everything to the extent that I personally would probably like to, but I have talked about almost everything um, elsewhere. And so I'll try and include cards or annotations or links for where you can go hear more. I did do a face cleanser lineup, so that's where you can hear more about Aqui and Anna Rose. I'm going to be doing a Moon brand review coming up very soon as well. Skin Owl Beauty Whip. This was also a Beauty Heroes discovery and I've been using it since this fall and I really like it. I think it's kind of a little bit of a divisive product. I'm not sure that everyone got on with it, but I have just found it to be so freaking beautiful and it's such a multitasker because I don't have to do like a separate hyaluronic product if I want to use this. I can use it in the morning if my skin's feeling very dry, kind of like SOS mode. I can use it at night layered with oil for like a really intense like hydration and I just really like it. I probably have about a quarter of my bottle left so it's been very beloved. Another Beauty Heroes discovery the Iuna Essence, and I have a feeling that this brand is a lot of people's, one of a lot of people's favorite skincare discoveries of 2017. The Essence is the Gommage product in Iuna's very minimal range. About uh, a third of the way through my jar, and this is just one of the most exceptional, unique, luxurious skincare products with really, really beautiful effects that I've ever tried in all of my years of using and testing skincare. I've been using it on average about once a week and I just absolutely love what it does to my skin. I, I feel like since I've been using Iuna's range, I've been getting a 
a bump or like an uptick in comments on my skin and the only thing that's really changed is using these Iuna products so I think that it just kind of is helping to sort of resurface and really bring your best skin forward and encourage cell turnover and all of that kind of stuff so amazing I had two sort of uh, favorite mask type of products in 2017. The first was Precious Skin Elixir's Sterling Honey Polish. I'm good friends with the founder of this range, Marissa. She lives on the North Shore of Massachusetts and I get to see her very regularly. I've tried uh, lots of things from her range and this is one of my favorite products, like top two products of, from her range of mine. A lot of people want to compare this product to May Lindstrom's The Honey Mud and I just think that that sterling honey polish is so much more effective. I never found that the honey mud gave my skin any sort of like lasting benefit, but with this it's just such a pleasure to have on. The smell is insane and I feel like it's one of those products that clarifies but sort of evens out and brightens the skin in a really really gentle way. You can leave this on for five minutes, you can leave it on for 45 minutes, really versatile, you get a ton of product, it's beautiful and I really, really enjoyed it this year. My other favorite mask I don't have, but I will insert a picture for you, and it's the Lil Fox Cleopatra mask. I talked more extensively about that in several different videos because it was a product that I didn't love initially and it took me a lot of trial and error to find the way that I liked it best. Also a Beauty Heroes discovery, it was the sidekick in the box, it was a box from this last spring, the Jungle Glow was the hero product, but the Cleopatra was definitely my hero product. I'm remembering where I talked about it. My Beauty Heroes 2016-27 retrospective, I talked a lot about Cleopatra there and it's going to be on my repurchase list for 2018. It's one of like my favorite masks, top five of all time, and I loved getting to experience it this year. Of course you know I'm gonna talk about Jordan. 2017 was the year that I tried Jordan Samuel's products. I think a lot of people discovered him in 2017. I've tried, or I had tried everything from the range, including Etoile and Hydrate, although now he's come out with other products like a balm and a Hydrate Mist, which I am dying to get my hands on. But for me, of everything I tried, his cleansers were so standout to me, and they're products that I always want to have around. The Plie Treatment Cleanser, it's called something else now, I'm blanking, but I do have also a backup bottle of the new one. And this is the After Show Balm Cleanser. I like both for different things. I was fortunate enough to have a facial with Jordan this past fall in Seattle. That's actually on my uh, one of my favorite experiences of 2017, but these cleansers were just so nice. They're so nice to use. 2017 was also the year that I really fell in love with Stark. Jess and I actually connected, Jess Lafleur, who's the founder of this brand, she and I connected um, we had sort of been in touch for like a number of years, but very tangentially. And we, our friendship really blossomed starting a year ago, basically, like a year ago, January or February. She had just relaunched Stark and she sent me her products to try and I was blown away. One of my absolute favorite products from her range and of the year for me is her Midnight Face Oil. This is just one of my favorite face oils. I've been using it for a year now. I have about half of my bottle left, but keep in mind I rotate and try lots of different things, but I look forward to using it still every single time. It smells amazing. The effects are beautiful. It's an e predominantly an evening face oil, but in the winter you could definitely use it during the day. Um, it's the heavier of the two oils in her range, City being the day oil. Totally, totally love this face oil, and I never want to be without it. The other favorite face oil that I discovered this year I don't have with me, I finished it, and it's the Virid Organics um, Anti-Aging Treatment Face Oil. I had a facial in May at Great Jones Spa in New York w using Verid's products. Um, it was a gua sha facial, so it was uh, using gua sha stones and doing um, sort of lymphatic drainage. And it was so luxe, so amazing. It helped me really appreciate several things. I mean, it helped me appreciate Verid's line in totality, but also how important it is to really get to try multiple products in a in a product's range to see kind of the cumulative effect of using them kind of all together. 
Uh, so I was using her toner and her anti-aging treatment face oil for a while, and the face oil is just one that I'll never forget, one that I would love to repurchase. It smells kind of like lemony, green coffee bean, complex herbal, totally like a true experience of a product and the effects were also just beautiful on the skin, super moisturizing and huh, just leaves me a little speechless. <laughs> okay, just a couple more quick skincare things to get through. The CV Skin Labs Restorative Skin Balm. If you need just kind of a multi-purpose balm to have around, if you have psoriasis or eczema outbreaks, if you um, need it for a first aid kit for things like burns or just inflamed chap skin, this saved my skin when I had a small dermatitis outbreak this fall. It just healed my skin like no other. And I've been trying some other CV Skin Labs products and I think that they're such beautiful quality. The person that formulated them is a cancer survivor and had formulated them um, specifically from the perspective of some, someone going through chemotherapy and radiation. So imagine the most sort of like extreme conditions um, that your skin could go through in terms of being sort of broken down and having a lot of irritants and inflammation. That's how these products are formulated. This will always have a place in my um, medicine cabinet because it saved me. Finally, I have two lip product favorites from this year, the Osmia Lip Repair and the Henne Organics Rose Diamonds Lip Scrub. Never thought that I could like a lip scrub as much as as much as I do this one. And this was another product that initially I just like couldn't be bothered with, but then the more I used it, the more I saw how well it performed, both in terms of exfoliating the lips and the condition that it left my lips in. You could, of course, make your own sugar lip scrub, but like, that's not very fun. And I that's just, I've never been one that's super into DIY, but I don't know, the experience of using this is really quite pleasant. I'm not even sure they do the Rose Diamonds one anymore. Um, the last I saw Detox Market was carrying a Nordic Berry version of this, but something about just like the emollients and the butters that it leaves behind is just top notch. Just a, a really nice kind of like little treat if you just want a kind of small little pick-me-up. And then the Osmia Lip Repair is their sort of evening lip balm. I do use the Lip Doctor, which is like a chapstick alternative for during the day. I love Osmia's lip products. I had tried samples of this in years past, but this is the first year that I got to sort of fully experience the product. And you can see how much of it I've used quite a bit. And I probably have had this since the summer. I love it. I use it every single night. It's one of the most moisturizing best lip products I feel like I've used. Um, it's a little bit more moisturizing on me than something like the Carrie Gran Lip Whip. That's a better spring-summer evening lip balm for me, and this is a better fall-winter evening lip balm. Shall we move on to makeup? Okay, so I have three sort of base products. 2017 was the year that I got my first like big girl real foundation. If you've been watching me for a while, then you would know that I have had just such a, <laughs> I, I wouldn't even say, it's definitely not a love-hate relationship. I just had never had any success with liquid foundations and I had always wanted to be a liquid foundation wearer. I saw so many reviews of this product. Really am not that big of a fan of the packaging if I'm being honest, but the product inside is um, really fantastic if you have normal to dry skin and you struggle with a foundation kind of looking cakey or clinging to dry patches and you want kind of a more high performing, sort of greenwashed, I mean, let's be honest, Josie Marin is not like eco per se, but it's also not as chocked full of like parabens and silicones the way other conventional brands are. And the performance is just exceptional. In my day-to-day -day life, I wear this pretty much uh, for like evening out makeup. And usually when I'm filming, I am wearing this, like I'm wearing it right now. I really, really like the coverage that it gives. It's not too heavy, um, it's not too light very pigmented. I do have it in the shade Euphoric RG20. They have a great color range and I highly recommend it. You've heard me talk about this product a lot and use it in lots of my recent makeup videos. It's the Becca Aqualuminous Perfecting Concealer. I have it in the shade Light and you're going to see that I have a lot of um, empty space showing through, which means that it's going to be time for me to get a new one very soon. 
really like this product. One of um, the best concealers I've tried ever. I think I got this like last February-ish and so I've had it almost a year. It stayed great. Um, if you want to see it in action again, I think in my last two Get Ready With Me's I used it. It's uh, like a lighter, less makeup-y looking version than like the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And Becca, again, it's sort of like Josie Marin or Tarte in that they kind of are trying to use less egregious chemicals in their formulations, um, but it's not like fully eco. For me, this just had ticked every box in terms of having a doe foot applicator, great coverage, moisturizing, long wearing, doesn't crease, uh, really great product. And then this summer, I used the Arcona SPF 30 Nearly Invisible Powder, which has one of these sort of retractable brush deals. I really wanted a product like this for touch-ups, sort of mid-afternoon, late in the day, for when I was commuting home or on the beach, which is very infrequently, but it does happen sometimes. Um, I just really wanted a portable SPF powder uh, to touch up the SPF that I had put on during the day. I prefer to use um, pretty exclusively physical sunscreens. So this is, writing has rubbed off, but I believe this is a zinc oxide and titanium dioxide blend. It does say nearly invisible. It's not fully translucent. It does have a very light tint to it, but I did not find it to ever look I don't know, powdery or anything. It's honestly just like a great product and I really, really liked it. These will be no surprise. Also talked about them incessantly, I feel like. It's two products from Au Natural, the Pink Champagne Powder Blush and the Truly Coco Eyeliner. They have some kind of innovative new packaging. This is mineral powder blush, but in kind of this pump dispenser. Uh, I used both of these I think in my like easy weekend get ready with me video and I talked about how much I liked them. I also talked about them in my Beauty Heroes retrospective um, being surprised by how much I liked them. Oh I don't know if you'll be seeing this in time but Au Naturel is having 15 or 20 percent off their website from December 29th through January 1st or 2nd. So if you wanted to pick up some things from their website I do have a link down below. But yeah I'm probably going to need to repurchase this this year and I, I would like to to try other colors. I just really, really like it and I hate blush and it's just a great product. I'm not wearing it today, but I wear it very, very regularly in my day-to-day -day life. And then this is just a really high performing eco gel eyeliner basically that I've really enjoyed. Tata Harper Very Illuminating Cream Highlight. From basically the summer onward, this became a fixture in my everyday makeup routine. I actually am wearing this today with some other things layered on top. Um, if you'd like to see this in comparison to lots of other cream highlighters, I did a very comprehensive highlighter lineup video if you want to see it swatched and next to other things. But this was just my favorite one that I have used this year um, and discovered and I have tried like a fair amount. I tried the Glossier highlights this year. I tried the Vapor highlights. I tried the Kevin Aquan highlights, which I think could also be favorites, but it's a little too preliminary for me to have put them in this video. But I just got so much use out of this this year and really, really liked it. Now, speaking of like premature favorites, take this one with a grain of salt, but I have to include it because I was that impressed. It's the Chanel Le Volume de Chanel Mascara. Again, also used, demoed this in recent Get Ready With Me videos, but it's just one of the most mind-blowing mascaras I've ever used, and I've, I've pretty much used up this little sample. It's just so good, and it's a synthetic bristle brush. I never have found one of those that I like. I actually received a full-size tube of this as a holiday gift this year, so I'm very excited to continue using this product, and if you can get your hands on a sample of it, prepare to kind of have your mind be blown. <laughs> Lip product favorite from this year is my Rodan Billy on the Bike Duo. Now, normally I feel like I am compulsively buy new lip products and I just, I realized as I was sitting down to do this video, how restrained I really had been this year in terms of makeup shopping. The lip products that did really stand out to me this year were from Rodan. So I have the Billy on the Bike lipstick, which I got first and have used a lot of. And I got the lip liner a little bit later. 
and really like having it as well. Everything from the, sort of the packaging and the aesthetic to the quality and experience and performance is top notch. I mean, I highly recommend these as a treat to yourself. I would actually like to get the So Mod set, which is the nude version. Yeah, really, really, really liked these this year. <laughs> Okay, so skincare and makeup were the two biggest categories to get through. Um, just a couple of things in the body care section. The thing that I had been trying the longest that's in this category is the Ellis Brooklyn Fable Excellent Body Milk. If you've been watching me for a while, then you would remember that I picked this up in last year's Sephora VIB sale. And sadly, I do not have very much of this left. I had actually initially picked up the candle in Fable from this brand and just didn't feel like the scent throw merited the price. So I exchanged it or returned it and decided to try the body milk and these are so worth it. I have also gone in and tried to test the, the perfume. They do do perfumes of the scents in the range. And I'm not as big of a fan of them as I thought that I would be. So for me, from Alice Brooklyn, um, the recommendation really would be these body milks. They perfume your skin so beautifully and they last. And it's in a way that's not so overpowering the way conventional body care products, scented body care products can be, but it's a little more amped up than kind of your traditional eco-smelling um, body products just really like. I might try another scent, like I'd like to try Pseudonym um, or Raven. I can't remember which one I like better. When when people tell me that they bought this off of my recommendation and are obsessed with it, it just makes me so happy because it's a scent that I could envision a lot of people liking. If you like things like Eccentric Molecule Ol' One or woodsy, cedary types of fragrances like that, it's just super, super nice. I'm noticing that my the things I'm saying about the products are starting to get like longer and longer. So let's let's keep the pace going. Red Flower Bioactive Berry White Peat Exfoliant. I now have this to accompany my beloved Red Flower Arctic Berry Cloud Milk Cream. Just a beautiful set. I they would make such a nice gift if you were to buy the exfoliant and the cream for someone. Um, just some of the best body care products I've ever tried. I've tried other things from Red Flower and not liked them as much as I like this um, Red Flower Nature range. And then this is another uh, sort of premature 2017 favorite, but I have to include it because it's just been sort of an indispensable part of my life for the last almost two months because keep in mind that I try them before the, bon the box launches, but it's the Couscous Modern Herbal Fusion Blue Body Wax. This was the December Beauty Heroes Discovery. I've used such a substantial amount of this. Oh, it's, it's a version of Max and Me Circle of Protection. That's how I feel about this product. Um, it's more than just a body care product. It's truly um, a mind body experience. I can't even like exp like put into words how good it feels when you put this on after a shower at the end of a long day, get into your like favorite sweats, get into bed, watch Bravo, eat dark chocolate. Like that's my life and it makes me so happy. <laughs> I need to try the rest of the body waxes in her range, but the blue one in particular, the smell is just so insane. I hope she never discontinues this product. Yeah, I'm a massive couscous fan after that Beauty Heroes box. Okay, now I have a sort of a miscellaneous category. Hair, nails, makeup, one makeup brush, and fragrance. Two of my favorite hair care discoveries of this year were Stark Tendril and the Reverie Hair Milk. Now again, this the hair milk could have been something that I discovered very late in 2016. In fact, I think I got this in the fall 2016 Sephora VIB sale. Predominantly a 2017 favorite and it's so good. I use this before I blow dry or heat style my hair. I feel like it gives really, really pretty shine and moisture and it's just been such a nice styling product. It's definitely just sort of like a lightweight leave-in conditioner and sort of like frizz tamer. I just find that before heat styling, um, it's kind of like a nice heat protectant and kind of helps just keep things looking smooth and shiny, which I really enjoy. Stark Tendril, I have loved. This was a replacement for those Euroke 
hair drops that I used to like to put on the ends of my hair before heat styling. I just prefer this for so many reasons. Um, I have actually used, again, about half of my bottle of this. It smells a little bit like old school bubble gum. It's this, she uses, uh, I think, geranium essential oil and ylang ylang, but it's like not greasy. It's the perfect hair oil, um, either like oil for your ends or you could use it as a scalp oil, um, but it's a particularly nice oil if you have medium to fine hair and you just wanna put a couple drops through the ends because so many hair oils can just look, make fine or medium hair look so greasy immediately. And this is formulated specifically for people with our hair type. Two products from the nail care brand Isla, Ayla or Isla, I'm pretty sure it's Isla. The Better Than Gel Top Coat and the 3-in-1 Nail Color Remover Nail and Cuticle Treatment uh, individually wrapped cloths. This totally blows Sashvit out of the water. It blows like any top coat out of the water. I had previously really, really liked the Shiswai blanking on what it was called, Awesome. It was the Shiswai Awesome top coat, which I really liked, but that brand uh, went out of business and I struggled for a bit to find um, a top coat that was high performing and also very glossy looking, which is the look that I like. This just totally delivers. I absolutely love it. In fact, I just ordered two nail polishes from Isla because I have liked this so much. I have never tried their color, but I will report back. Along with something like the Henne Organics Rose Diamonds Lip Scrub, these nail polish remover wipes are just a kind of like an affordable little luxury that really elevates the nail polish removal experience, which just saying that, I'm kind of like, Mercedes, who are you? I think you get 10 to a box and they're like 10 or $12 maybe. But the reason these are so good is that in addition to really effectively removing nail polish, they really provide really nice nourishment to the cuticles. So I don't use these every time I remove my nail polish, but like once or twice a month for like a deep cuticle treatment, um, super, super nice. At some point I also intend to buy just the bottle of their nail polish remover, which I have heard has that same sort of cuticle uh, softening and refining quality. Um, I'm not sure I've ever talked about this on my channel, but it was definitely a favorite this year, something I bought uh, quite early on in the year. And it's the Hakuhodo J5523, is that right? Yes, J5523 makeup brush. This was an exact swap out for my MAC 217. This was 217 the brush that was like this and the 219 was the pencil brush. I think that's right. I got rid of all of my MAC brushes because they were old and shedding and in horrible condition, but I had had them for like the last 10 years, so maybe that's fair enough. I did a fair amount of research and decided to pick up the Hakuhodo J5523, and I've been super, super happy with it. These are Japanese crafted goat hair brushes, and this is just your standard kind of like all-purpose brush for, I use it like for everything, to do like shading on the lid like I have today, can blend, it's just sort of like an all-in-one great brush to have. Okay, and then the last thing in my little miscellaneous beauty category is my favorite fragrance discovery of the year, which is the Hermes Ample Nargulier, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I wish my French were better. I need a French tutor. If you know of any French tutors in Boston, please email me. I would like to get a private French tutor. I smelled this on a friend of mine, a male friend of mine at a dinner in March of this last year and I was obsessed. And he works at Hermes, so he uh, nabbed a couple samples for me and I've been wearing it. It's quite a unisex fragrance. It's definitely like a fall, winter, evening scent. It's really kind of like heavy and intense. It almost reminds me of like cordial. You know the liqueur, like a cordial? It has this like fruit, it's like a deep, like fermented fruity smell almost, but sort of musky, like I think of like dark red Bing cherries and like real like mahogany wood and like sort of leathery and that's the kind of scent it is. It's so, so good. <laughs> Now that we're through beauty, let me just tell you a few of my favorite lifestyle discoveries this year. The first is the Captain Blankenship New Moon Smokeless Smudge Spray. This is my second bottle of this, actually. It smells like Palo Santo rather than sage, um, but I actually think it has uh, essential oils of both in it. 
Um, I'm just actually obsessed with this. I spray it constantly after I clean, at night before I go to bed, I'll spray around my bed, I'll spray my doorway very regularly with this. So if you are someone that's sensitive to energy in your home or in your office, um, and you're kind of as obsessed as I am with keeping the space feeling fresh and revived and light, then I highly recommend this product. My Red Garnet from the metaphysical shop House Witch in Salem, Massachusetts was another one of my favorite um, things that came into my life this year. I kind of went on a little bit of a crystal buying bender and then a subsequent hiatus, which is I think how it goes. This was actually I think the last piece that I purchased and I think I got it in June, like June or July, and it was in a favorites video around that time. I just love it. It's such a beautiful piece and um, I feel very connected to it. Not to like play favorites, I'm connected to like all of my stones, but for some reason this one felt really um, special to me and it's been one of my favorite things in my life this year. Laundress products were a favorite discovery of mine this year. I have the Wool and Cashmere shampoo as well as the Delicate shampoo and then I also have the Wool and Cashmere spray and the Delicate spray. Sort of as a continuation from 2016, I've continued to be capsule wardrobe oriented, which means investing in high quality pieces and fabrics, so I mostly get my silk and cashmere and wool products on Everlane. Um, I'd like to expand out and perhaps uh, try retailers like Kuyana and Cezanne, but again, my philosophy has always been wanting to invest in higher quality uh, pieces that cost a little bit more but then really take care of them. And I've just been so super happy with the laundress products. I use the delicate wash to hand wash um, silk or bras or delicate like undergarments and things like that. And then obviously the wool and cashmere shampoo is great for my cashmere sweaters, which I end up doing, I don't know, maybe three or four times a season. And then I just kind of use the wool and cashmere spray in conjunction with a hand steamer um, to keep things refreshed and just total lifesaver, amazing products. <laughs> I wanted to tell you about some of my favorite media discoveries this year. These were the most noteworthy things that I saw or read um, or listened to. So the first is the Shit Town podcast from Serial. I don't know if people say S Town or Shit Town, but it's Shit Town. They just abbreviate it with the asterisk to avoid the expletive. One of the most like profound stories that I've um, ever heard. I'll remember it like for the rest of my life, and I keep meaning to actually re-listen to it. So. If you haven't yet listened to that podcast, please do. I just thought it was so incredibly poignant and sad, but deep and meaningful. Um, it was just truly, truly something that will stay with me for the rest of my life. My favorite movie of the year, I think was Moonlight, which I saw pretty early on. I think I saw it in February of 2017, and then it went on to win Best Picture, didn't it? Um, there was all that hubbub with La La Land as the fake winner, but then Moonlight really won. Um, again, another piece of media, a film that I don't think I'll ever forget. These stories about the complexity and sort of the inherent bittersweet nature of the human experience are things that I've always loved since I was, you know, a kid. I've loved, you know, reading things like that, seeing documentaries, you know, human interest pieces, basically. I don't know, Moonlight was just deeply profound. The acting was really, really good. I also recommend the Song Exploder podcast on the person that uh, composed the music for Moonlight. I thought that it was just so beautiful to listen to the thought process behind that and how the music got scored for the film. Okay, favorite book. Now again, I just finished this, so I don't know if it's safe to call it my favorite or if it's just the thing that's freshest in my mind, but I really enjoyed it. And it's kind of, feels kind of special to mention because a viewer actually recommended this book to me several times. She's someone that, you know, has watched me for a while and she's been engaged and she was sending me these um, Instagram direct messages that I had to read this book, I had to read this book, and I was just, I think she first told me like over the summer. 
and I was just busy and I was like, yeah, yeah, I will. And then she would like touch down every now and then and kind of like gently remind me. And so I decided to pick it up. I actually am of the belief that you read a book. Like I have books that I've purchased and still like haven't read from like years ago. And I just think that when it's the right time, you'll pick up a book and read it. The book I finally got around to reading was Elif Shafak's The 40 Rules of Love. This is a fictional story based loosely on the life of Rumi, the uh, Islamic or Persian mystic, and his um, soulmate in life or sort of spiritual companion, Shams of Tabriz, um, who's kind of known to be Rumi's sort of spiritual mentor, teacher, companion. You know, it was it's a very touching book. I have like more extended thoughts on it, but I do really recommend reading it, especially if you like Rumi. Some of the writing, um, especially in the more like contemporary parts of the book, uh, so if you read this, that will make sense. It kind of takes place halfway in Rumi's era and then halfway in like present day. Some of the present day stuff I didn't really care for, but the historical part I really loved. A nice book to end my year on, I guess. Another favorite of mine this year was being a New Yorker hard copy receiver. Uh, this is actually a gift subscription from my mother. I'm not sure that I would have believed enough in myself that I could <laughs> get through New Yorkers on ex as expedient of enough basis to keep up on a because they come every week and they're like hefty. So I actually have developed a, an appropriate strategy for me that works to stay up to date on the New Yorkers. Uh, which is never read the fiction. Like I skip all of the goings on about town in New York. I start at the talk of the town and read all of the short stuff. And then I strategize and read the thing, the long story that I wanna read the most and anything else on top of that is gravy. Uh, so that's my New Yorker strategy in a nutshell. And I have to say, like I give my mom a lot of credit. She gets me a subscription to the New Yorker and to the Atlantic and I feel like staying up to date on reading them. Like I have a commute on a train in the morning to and from work. I think it serves me way better than scrolling through Instagram every morning on my phone, you know? So I'm very thankful uh, for it. I feel much more culturally conversant, much more informed on um, really important issues that are going on. And I just think it's a really fantastic publication. And it's a good time to be supporting very high quality journalism. <laughs> We'll close out with some of my favorite experiences of 2017. So one of my highlights from the year was going to Seattle. I went over Columbus Day weekend uh, with my sister. I've wanted to go to Seattle since like the late 90s and I had never been. Uh, I've always felt quite drawn to the Pacific Northwest. And while I was there, um, I had a facial with Jordan Samuel, which was absolutely a highlight of my year. And then I got to meet Erica from Hitchcock Madrona, which was another highlight. We filmed some videos together, which I will have linked down below if you haven't seen them yet. Getting to experience Seattle. I just had a great time with my sister. It was like a perfect trip. Just a highlight, total highlight of my year. In August, I decided to start a two-year private apprenticeship to study classical Helen astrology and so that has been another experience highlight of 2017. I'm about the first quarter of the way through the curriculum and it has been a profound experience. I would like to do more um, astrology apprenticeship reflections. I would like to in 2018 like in my monthly favorites videos start giving a little space at the end to current astrological transits to let you know about. Yeah I just think increasingly as I gain deeper and deeper understanding of like real astrology, like astrology the way that it was practiced 2,000 years ago with these very ancient and sacred techniques, um, it has enriched my life in ways like I can't even tell you. Uh, part of my daily spiritual practice is reading my astrology teacher, Adam Ellenboss's blog. He's now also doing uh, video blogging. So if any of you are interested, I will have all of his information down below. I just think that he is such an amazing teacher and he's just a really good human. And I feel very fortunate that my path crossed with his and uh, he's my teacher for the next couple of years. So this is just, I'm just showing this as a, an example. This is one of the textbooks in my curriculum, but he does also offer group classes if you're interested in studying astrology for yourself. And I will be talking more about astrology in 2018 for sure. 
uh, as a sort of quick addendum to the astrology thing, uh, someone else that I discovered in 2017 who became one of my favorite uh, people that I follow on social media is Claire Gallagher, the body astrologer. She's a medical astrologer who also um, is in the process of revamping her lunar-based workout system. Um, it used to be called Moon RX, and it used to be a monthly subscription-based service, but she's been um, redoing all of that. But I highly recommend her. I'm actually saving up to have a medical astrology consultation with her in 2018. I'm super, super curious about that. Um, I think medical astrology is really fascinating. And she's she also practices classical Hellenistic astrology, which is what I study. I have loved, loved her. I watch her Instagram stories. I follow her every move basically it's like one of those deals um and then the last thing that i guess i'll close out with saying is that in august uh l'amour et la musique launched a patreon campaign which has been another favorite because i spent my summer working with one of my good friends who is a sort of a freelance brand strategist to develop the packaging of La More La Musique on Patreon. And I'll be doing a few little tweaks to Patreon in 2018, nothing major, but a few little things. You can look forward to more La More La Musique vlogging in 2018. That's kind of the, the most near range goal, but there are other things that I would like to keep working on. There will be a new La More La Musique website in early 2018. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you so much to all of you who watch my videos, whether you're on Patreon or not. And it's just been such an incredible year for me. I'm so thankful that I have this outlet. I really don't think you understand how much of a highlight it is for me on Sundays when I read your comments that come through on my videos. It's just one of the most gratifying feelings. So many of you have been watching me for quite a long time now and so it's like I recognize you in the comments, I feel like I develop a rapport with a lot of you and it's just it's so special like I know it, I'm like kind of ending on an emo note now but so I do also have uh, music favorites but I'm not gonna list them here I'm going to have a playlist of my top five tracks of 2017 as well as my top five albums I already have four albums down but I'll make it five the tracks will be embedded and streamed on my website for you to listen to but as far as the albums go if you like the snippets that you hear either on Beatport or on iTunes which is I think where you can hear all of them consider purchasing the albums for yourself to support the artists I'm a big fan of supporting a content that you really like. If you're still here at the end of this video, then I just absolutely salute you. Thank you for watching all the way through. I feel like there's always more that I could have put in here and said, but this is what I really thought about and uh, you know, refined my list and iterated on it for a good couple of weeks. So I put a lot of thought into this and I hope you found it useful and let me know what some of your highlights from 2017 have been product wise or lifestyle wise, reading wise, anything. Consider beauty to be such a holistic concept and goes beyond products. So if you feel inspired to add any of these items to your life, I would love to hear that too. It's really rewarding when people find products that they love based on things that they've seen on here. So I'm totally a blabbering and I need to go. <laughs> Thank you so much for another incredible year on La More La Musique. And I will look forward to seeing you guys with plenty more videos in 2018. I will see you next Sunday. Bye.